Deeper Than Music Radio. What up, what up, what up? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. The Arcade Cabinet Podcast. Podcast for gamers, by gamers. And ladies and gentlemen, today we have Bill Tindo, Fiery Fox, Sharon, and I am Markeva, so you can call me Furious. And we are the Arcade Cabinet crew. And a special announcement, if you have a fire stick... No, I'm sorry, a Fire Tablet or Amazon Alexa, why don't you go ahead and ask her to play the Arcade Cabinet podcast. So, Fiery Fox, I'll let you do the honors of what is the topic for this episode. We're going to be talking about female video game characters. Who are your favorite? Who are your least favorite? Who's your favorite? Nah, you first, me last. Save the best for <laughs> last. Okay, okay. Hey, look, I- Bill, I got who's it. your favorite? Oh, no, Sharon. Okay, go ahead. Who's... Oh, man. Go ahead, Sharon. No, you know what? I'm going to tell you. My first favorite female character that I ever played with that I can truly remember was Chun-Li, a Street Fighter. Street Fighter 2. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah. That was the first one I learned how to play with. Okay. You know? Man, and I remember I saw that. And, like, she kicked, it with, kicked with that leg. That was like, oh, man, check it out. And she was also, to me, she was the easiest one to learn how to play with, you know, because of that. But I mean, you uh-huh. know, I used, to, I used to get down with Chunky, man. You know, I used to, I, I walked all over by Smith into that game. And she was the first character I beat the game with, you know, because I mean, they, like I said, they made it so easy to play with her next to somebody like Honda. But yeah, oh, yeah Chung, she got that. Yeah, that was, that's, that was my one right there. I, and I still play with Chun to this day. You know, I even have like the alternate costumes and stuff for her now on a new Street Fighter. Well, it's not new anymore, but. The Street Fighter Five Championship, you know, you can buy like the alternate costumes, and yeah, it's pretty badass what they've done with her. I gotta admit, you know, I gotta say, I've I've always really liked Chun Li. Uh, I think she's a great character, and uh, I feel like way too often they take the female characters in fight games, and they're all pretty much the same. I mean, look at Mortal Kombat. That Melina and Katana is the same character. Uh, Sonya Blade is fairly one-dimensional, whereas Chun Li actually felt like she had a backstory. She felt like she was her own individual character. Yeah. yeah. I, one thing I do remember about Chun Li is that I was like, man, she got some thick legs. Yeah. <laughs> those, those thighs, man. Yeah. I was showing him that game and he saw the legs. He was like, oh my God, you know. Well, it's like first to making female video game characters look more realistic than their male counterparts because every man has big muscles and uh, rippling beard and like, yeah, yeah. All men look that well, way. Yeah. <laughs> lives. You know, uh, I'm a, I'm a jump in here, and although not my favorite uh, female character, I'm gonna say the first female character I ever really played with was Samus from Metroid. And oh, you know, yeah. when we first started playing that game, we didn't know that was a woman in the costume. You yeah. know, until you until you get all the way to the end, then you find out, and everybody was like, "What? That's crazy!" But you know what? gave her a solid, solid place in uh, video game history because yeah. Metroid was such a... It, it, it was so monumental at the time, you know? Well, it, it, was back, just, it was a big deal. I'm going to back you up on that because, uh, you know, when I first played Metroid, and I never actually made it through the game, however, there was mm-hmm. a, a Justin Bailey code. You put that in, and you could actually play through the game and that's how we found out it was a female because you know it takes off the, like it would take off like the helmet and like part of the woman you had you saw the female. I was like, oh wow, it's a girl. She had like pink hair, purple hair, something like that. But yeah. uh-huh. I'm sorry to say I never really got into Metroid. So what? Hey, here's a here's a little <laughs> funny thing. Um, so uh, for. They don't really do it so much in America. You see the occasional comic book based on a, a video game, but in uh, Japan, they quite often do. They have full manga books about comic books, 
and uh, Nintendo was allowing Metroid to be published as a comic book, except it was never, Samus was never shown out the armor, and it was assumed she was a man, and so she had bikini uh, Japanese girls with her, like, with her arms around them, you know, because people just assumed it was a guy, and because of that, in Japan, Samus is a gay icon. Wow. Okay. Well, so I, I, it's just a little interesting piece of pop culture, but um, that was my first female character. Now my personal favorite, and you don't ever really get to play with this person as a character, but obviously it's Zelda from Legend of Zelda. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, you don't personally get to use her, but to me, she's not always the princess in distress. Like you have Peach from Mario. Uh, She's always getting kidnapped. You got to save her. With Zelda, you don't always have to save her. You know, she's part of the story, but she doesn't have to have you. Um, In Breath of the Wild, she has been fighting Ganon for a hundred years while Link slept and healed. She was the one that held Ganon back for over a hundred years. You know, as far as a, a powerful character goes, she had a Triforce of Wisdom. Uh, she she was just all that to me. She wasn't just a, a girly girl to be saved. She's an mm-hmm. integral part of the story every time. Yeah. She yeah. also fight Ganon on certain games. Yes. I'm going to say um, mine is kind of um, the first thing I thought of. Well, of course, there's Miss Pac-Man, but one of my favorite is she got to fly and pick up and throw things is... Uh, Princess was it Princess Peach from Super Mario Two? I thought she was the coolest oh, yeah. character yes. out of uh, out of Mario yeah. and Luigi because they all had their specific. They're like they had their own little limitations. I think with Mario, he could jump a certain way. Luigi could jump real high, but Princess Peach, she yeah. could fly. She could hover. Yeah, she could float. Yep. She could float, and that helped. That worked very well. It was very handy in uh, Super Mario Brothers Two. Yeah, it was. I used to look. I, that's what I used to play with all the time. And once again, that's why I also beat that game with first, first because she could do the flow. You know what I mean? She can. I mean, yeah. And I think I like I, using Luigi because he had the high jump, but yeah. he was also slippery. Like yeah. he slide a little bit when he stopped. Yeah. If I if I remember correctly, didn't she kind of struggle when she like if he jumped on somebody and she picked him up? Yeah. She struggled a little bit. Right, yeah. and when she pulled plants out the ground again, she you'd see a little bit of sweat, a little bit of tension before she got it up and out. Yep. Yeah, she made the float with that float. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> you could float over a lot of stuff. Yeah, Definitely yeah, helped. float to warp zones and all kinds of stuff in that game. Yeah, I, I tell you, another another second favorite of mine, real quick was Blaze Fielding from the Streets of Rage game. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about her. Blaze got done out, man. Blaze was fast. Every time I play that game, I play with Blaze. I mean, she I mean, she dominates. She had like you know a I mean? she had like a Chun-Li vibe about her. She did. She did have a Chun-Li vibe about her. Like more of a Western style Chun-Li, but yeah. And yeah, she was tough. You know, she was she was super tough. I love playing with Blaze. What about you, Fire Fox? Who's last but not least, last but not least. I'm honestly really surprised that none of you guys mentioned Kazooie. Yes, girl. Oh, come yeah. on. Mm. Yes, absolutely. See, I guess I've never played that game. Banjo and Kazooie, awesome. you know? Oh, Loud yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. She's, she's a she. Like, I, I love that. I think that's really cool that they made Kazooie a girl because they didn't have to do that. No, they didn't. I, I like Kazooie because obviously if you play through, you know, Banjo Kazooie or Banjo Tooie, she's such a smart ass. Like no matter what anybody says to her, she's got like a smart ass reply. Yep. Always and, and, and it's always funny. And I, I actually while we're sitting here and I'm talking about it, I can hear her the way they did the voices because they didn't have the memory for voices that <laughs> I I hear it right now. <laughs> Man, I didn't and, know that. You know, 
so obviously why why didn't anybody mention Laura Croft isn't she oh, the most famous female game, game character yeah. I mean I don't think she's the best but she's probably the most famous right yeah well we uh, have favorite not most well known <laughs> not the one most seen in porn uh, <laughs> there we go well I'm gonna <laughs> Laura Croft, as of late, she, she's uh, I mean, she's pretty, she's pretty bad, you know. I played it uh, within that game, and yeah, she, she can get down. You know, she's got, she got some serious background going on. Oh, what about the character in uh, Resident Evil? I can't remember. Jill Valentine. Uh, yeah, Jill Valentine. There's several actually in Resident yeah. Evil. There's one called Ada Wong, also. Yeah. Kind of like. She's kind of like sort of a bad guy, but not really. She, uh, I think she kind of runs like with Leon a little bit. But yeah, she, she, she's pretty good. Uh, man, there's so many good female uh, characters, you know, in the games. I mean, you know, I mean, Last of Us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ellie from Last of Us. Uh, what do you think about Heather Mason from Silent Hill? She's a supporting character in the first one and the main character in the third one. I, I mean, a good move that they did there. I thought that was a cool move. I didn't play yeah, it. it was because, like, in the beginning, she was like a background character, and later you get into her whole story. Uh, I mean, talk about setting video games up to have a certain feel of a movie franchise. Uh, Silent Hill did it, and that was a good move by them by using her the way they did. I'm gonna tell you another thing about Ellie from the, uh, the Last of Us in the second game. She's actually a, a female uh, gay character. Mm. Yes, I knew that. that. That was that was crazy. I played that game. You know, I mean, it was it was a good game, but man, it was there's some there was some intense stuff going on in there with her. And then um... I I knew that only because I actually read some comments written by uh, some incels that were not happy about that. They were talking about how they felt it wasn't necessary to the story or whatever, and I'm like, I, I don't, I don't disagree with it. Like, I I feel like it was a good part of the story, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's and really they, that's they and they didn't like overdo it. They didn't try to shove it down anybody's throat. It was just like part of the story. It fit. It was natural feeling, you know. Yeah. The, how do you have a problem with it like that? I I don't get it. I got one. Well, like, if you have you, well, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say like Storm from uh, X Men. She was pretty badass. Yeah. Storm. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the newer games yeah. have more. I think female characters. Like I don't know if you played um, Outer Worlds. There's like a bunch of them in that. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. there's like one of them, and she's a ship mechanic. And it's oh, funny because wow. it's like a bunch of male characters, but it's like the the ship mechanic is a female, and then it's like the engineer on one of the really big, like, mass ships is another female, and they end up like falling in love, and it becomes like what one is of the Firefly classes. the game? No, Outer Worlds, Dick. Outer Worlds, okay. Outer Worlds, okay. <laughs> oh, Alien <It's... laughs> Isolation. <Yeah. laughs> Wait, what now? Alien Isolation has a female character. In fact, it's Ripley's daughter. Oh, uh, I forgot her name. Amanda. And I mean, yeah, that was pretty. That's a pretty solid female character, also. Oh man, you mentioned that Sigourney Reaver was pretty bad in uh. Aliens. Aliens. Oh yeah, she was yeah. pretty bad. Yeah. So this one, this is gonna throw back to Sharon and uh, Mark, and I don't know if Jenny's gonna be uh, familiar with this one. Joanna Dark. From the Perfect Dark franchise, oh. Rare made GoldenEye, and then they their next move was to make Perfect Dark, which was a thousand times better than GoldenEye, but still along those same lines. And instead of using a male character, they put a female character up front, and it was Joanna Dark. And the game is way better than GoldenEye. I mean, it's like top of the line N64, as good as mm. it gets. You know, I have that game. I have that game, but I have never played it ever. Really? 
if you like GoldenEye, everything that was wrong with that game, everything that bothered you about it, is completely fixed in Perfect Dark. See, I never played GoldenEye. I've seen it, but I, mean, I just kind of always because I was never, I was never a fan of James Bond. You know, it was like you don't have, you don't have to be for GoldenEye, man. GoldenEye introduced four of us sitting in a room together playing FPSs oh, yeah. against each other. Yeah, yeah. That's what was important yeah. about GoldenEye. But I, I, I never, I never been a James Bond character. I mean, uh, uh, like with the movies and anything. So I just kind of, I don't know. I've seen like maybe one or two movies, but I, I never really got into it too much. And right? I feel like I feel like the fighters, man. Like you mentioned after Chun Li, because I'm thinking of like all the like SNK Neo Geo games. They had some pretty good female characters that were pretty pretty bad and then like the Capcom and the Marvel I just can't think of them all <laughs> I can't remember their names but they're yeah I'm glad you mentioned that because I remember you know, the first time the first time I saw uh, this this character called Mai Sharnu I have you say her last name and she was in Fatal Fury 2 and she was the first time that I saw, I saw a female character have some bounce you know I mean, if you know what I mean, you know, we, I mean, we saw that in our case. I was like, oh, she's got, she's got some cleavage action, action going on. It's like, I mean, yeah, she had a lot of bounce. I mean, she was like the first character they did that with. I was like, wow. <laughs> Wait, didn't they, which one was that? So, which one was that with the bounce? With enhanced? Was it Soul Calibur? There was one fighting game that kind of like enhanced the bounce. Uh, <laughs> that, 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 was, that was Fatal Fury 2. Fatal Fury 2. She had, okay. she had yeah, and she wore like a, she wore like a outfit. Yeah, man. So, uh, did I? I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, the Half Life series. What about port the Portal games? I think I saw uh, Portal like- One, Portal Two. They they exist in the Half Life universe, but you know you could create portals to go here and there, and stuff like that. Uh, basically, it's like uh, it, it's set up like Half Life, but at the same time. It's also kind of a puzzler because you need to figure out where to set up your entrances to your portals and where to set up your exits. Anyway, the main protagonist of both of those games is a woman named Shell. Mm-hmm. And she's a pretty solid all-around character. Yeah. And supposedly she's modeled after one of the daughters of uh, one of the development team. Mm. Yeah. But, you know... That, that kind of stuff happens a lot not just with the uh, women in games but men too you know uh, they model somebody after somebody they know you know a similar attitude or exaggerated or something yeah because that's uh, a whole different the last, of us, the last of Us was actually kind of modeled after that one actress which I think she winds up suing them behind that Oh, uh, she plays Juno oh Ellen oh, Page okay. Yeah. yeah. Kind of model behind her. Man, now that cool. you say that, now that you say that, it does look like Ellen Page. That's what drew me to that game so much because I always thought that Ellen Page was cute. You know, I was like, oh look, they got Ellen mm-hmm. Page in a video game, I, I, and I wanted to play it. And it, I mean, it was it was really good. But I'm a, I mean, I'm gonna I'm spin it on you for a little bit. One of the best bad female characters that I played that I, that I didn't play. I mean, you get to fight against. Was in Star Wars: uh, Fallen Order. Mm. The uh-huh. last, uh, you fight this Jedi. You know she has like a double blade lightsaber. I mean she, I mean she's badass, man. I mean, she, I mean she can run for your money. And she's actually trained by, actually trained by a female Jedi, which is actually a, a black character. But she uh, winds up going bad, and then she winds up getting trained by Darth Vader. And yeah, they, I mean yeah, you have to see it. All right, Fiery yeah. Fox, your least favorite female video game character. Laura Croft. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can see that. I, I, I see that. She might be the most famous, but she's probably also the most overrated. Because I'm not going to yeah. lie, if you, if you think about the first one, you like all she does is run around. and I mean, back then yeah. it was cutting edge. But then if you play it now, you're just like, ah, this is news. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it was just a little before my time, but I don't know. Like, everything I grew up with Laura Croft was all the, like, 
Angelina Jolie movies, and then it was like, oh yeah, and then there's those video games, which is just obviously like fan service. Yeah. 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 The the game, the Tomb Raider games around that time were not very good. Yeah. They weren't. They were just kind of gray and dull. I mean, I never even played the first Tomb Raider game. In fact, I didn't even play the Tomb Raider game until Xbox, like 360, like maybe about two years ago. You know what it was? Is the original Tomb Raider games were a brilliant idea, and yeah. if only slightly boring. But then what happened is it got very popular, so they made a movie out of it, mm-hmm. and then they made more games that were based off the movies instead of the previous games, yeah. and yeah. it's just a, it's a turd circle and going down, man. Well, what about just, uh, what about the latest and greatest uh, Tomb Raiders? Are they is it an enhancement, improvement, or kind of? I don't think it's back. I don't know. I, I thought Tomb Raider was pretty damn good when I played it on the Xbox 360. Uh, when, they re- when they reintroduced it, they made it look more realistic. They had a pretty solid story. I never, I never uh, jumped into the ones after that. But in fact, I have it downloaded from my PlayStation 4. I just never really got the time to play it. But I thought that they were, I thought they were pretty good. You know? Actually, aren't, aren't if they I... coming out with a newer movie or something like that? They're trying to revamp it, or is there like a reboot coming soon? They made a movie out of it a few years ago. Oh, okay, it was a few years. See, that's how much I pay attention to Laura Croft. <laughs> yeah. And it was based on, it was based on the game, like now, the, uh, the movie. Yeah, game. I mean, look, if, if they never came out with another Tomb Raider game, I probably wouldn't even notice unless somebody told me. Yeah. Because I, I've gotten to the point where I played Tomb Raider. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm done with it. I feel like it's just more steps along the same path, but it's still the same path. You know, every Legend of Zelda has its own feel, but yeah. every Tomb Raider feels like another Tomb Raider. You know? Yeah. I think yeah. all the, I think the tombs are rated at this point. You know, maybe maybe she should be Museum Hunter or something else, but I think the tombs have been rated. Hell, I'll be honest. You're right. I didn't. Some I just kept on going straight through the game because I wanted to see what was going to happen next. You know, they always gave you the option to go to the tombs, and I never did. I was like, yeah, and no, I don't, because I'm not a side quest when it comes to video games. So I, I like to keep going and see yeah. what was going to happen. And I, if I revisit the game, then I'll go and do like the side quests and everything. But I, I just never did it. I do. I do all the side quests. I'm a piddler, man. I'm out there for hours doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. My least favorite female character, and this is a little controversial, and my kids have get, gotten mad at me for referring to her as that dead chick, is Eris from Final Fantasy VII. Ah, uh, oh, the one that dies? Like, yeah. And I, that I'm like, oh, you know, the dead chick. And they're like, oh, come on, man. How you disrespect her like that? And I'm like, I like Final Fantasy VII, but I didn't care about her as a character at all. So she... Respect anything or anyone. He has no respect. Yeah. But she was I like plenty of respect. She was like the protector, right? She was the healer. She would heal everybody. That was her job, uh-huh. right? That was her specialty. Well, she didn't heal herself. And she got killed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Very true. You know what's her? Go ahead, Sharon. I have never played in that game. You missing out, man. Uh, uh, yeah. There was so many urban legends back in the day about what you had to do for Eris not to die. You know? Yeah. But it's an integral part of the game and it has to happen. There is no game without it. Uh so there is no version of the game that ever existed without her dying. But you know, growing up. There was tons of stuff like, okay, if you do this, this, and this, she won't die, you know? And, of course, everybody had their tricks, but none of them worked. It was just all urban legends. Speaking of Final Fantasy, one thing that I always wondered, why do the the series, why do they vary so much? Like, Final Fantasy VIII is on a whole different pathway than Final Fantasy VII. Why do they... Um... I don't know. I feel like they, like, all right, so I feel like 
a game company, a developer that is willing to experiment and do something different, especially after they created something widely popular, and instead of retreading the same thing because they know it'll sell, is kind of respectable to me. Like they mm. they they don't want to do exactly the same game over again. They try to do something new. They try to create something different. And you know, if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. But you gotta respect that effort. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like the jump is like it's totally different characters. I would say my yeah. least favorite female character is the female from Sonic, a uh, Dreamcast game, Sonic Adventure. Amy? Amy, yeah. She annoyed me for some reason. <laughs> she, was, she was annoying. Nias has spoken. Amy is annoying. <laughs> I, I don't know if I really have a, a least favorite female character, you know? Um, I guess I, as, as far as that aspect, I never really thought about it. You know, Amy was a little... It was, it was a little weird character, you know, with that hammer or whatever, but... I don't know. I guess a lot of the, a lot of the side characters in that Sonic Adventure to me were just a little off because I always just wanted to play with Sonic. Yeah. You know, I mean, believe it or not, I don't think I completed a lot of them, a lot of them story. Like I know there was like a, a cat named Big Cat. He was like chasing oh, a fish or a frog. Oh uh, yeah. I just like ah, I'm gonna just stick with Sonic. The only way I played with all the extra characters was when Sonic Adventure Part Two came out and they made you play with them. It was like, oh man, I gotta play with this character again. And then when Sonic came out, I was like, okay, yeah, good. The speed, we get to run. But I, I don't. I, I, a, I can't think of any uh, characters I dislike right now. So here's a question for Jenny. Jenny, what do you think of Diva from Overwatch? You're an Overwatch player, technically a female character. What's not female about her? Yeah, well, technically, uh, technically in all capacity, yeah, she's yeah, she right, right. She she is a female. I'm sorry, I was thinking about the big, you know, pink her mecca. Yeah, what? her mecca. Um, and you know, I wasn't really thinking too much about the physical female on the inside. But uh, are you a fan? Yeah, I love Diva. I like all the female Overwatch characters. I think they're all great. You know, I'm a Mercy main. Um. I think it's really cool the way that Overwatch not only, and I know I've said it before, but I'll say it a million times, I think it's really cool the way that Overwatch not only introduces you to female characters, but it also introduces you to characters from all different backgrounds who speak different languages, have different cultures, you know, real belief systems, and, like, their skins reflect that, too. Mm. And, you know, they do all these different events and, like, the Lunar New Year event, the Olympic event, they have multicultural, like, skins that are unique to the characters based on the regions that they're from. And it's like all of their voice lines are all based uniquely on where they're from. Like, they speak languages and dialects, and it's cool. They all have backstories. Like, how many game developers, you know, okay, fine, like, it's one thing to create a story, and it's like, these are the set characters with their backgrounds, but it's like, they're always adding in new ones in Overwatch. And, right. I mean, it's just it's just so diverse. It's crazy. I love it. So it's like a, a you know, expanding I, platform. Expanding. Oh, fast. And, it, and, it, and a lot of young people play it, and it's cool because, I mean, like, kids will play it and be like, oh, I wonder where Lucio is from. Like, I want to Google it. And then they have all these, like, Wikipedias where it tells you all this information about oh, them wow. so you can learn like oh wow he's from here and like that's really cool and I want to know what language he speaks and it's, it's just awesome word to big bird well ladies and gentlemen we got about two minutes left and fiery fox since you started it off you can go ahead and start it off uh, so any closing words um you know you, you can find me on instagram you can find me on twitch streaming is the future um, I'm all about that. It, it, I think we should all s try Twitch streaming together, maybe play a game. I think that could be really fun. Yes, yes. What do they do? So, yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, um, I'm, uh, I'm Sharon. You find me on Facebook, Sharon Art. You know, also, you may not know, but you can find me in my mind's eye. You know, you check out my artwork. Uh, I'm working on a new site right now. It's going to be in your perfect studio. 
Sharon Harrington first, uh, of course, and yeah, so we're, we're working on that. Copy, copy. Um, All right, I'm, I'm. Go ahead, Bill. Go ahead, Bill. Oh. Start it off, baby. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'm Nintendo. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on YouTube. Uh, I just started a Twitch. There's absolutely nothing on there yet uh actually i was talking to jenny earlier and i was having a lot of problems because i'm old as shit um so i'll work all that out uh also if you're looking for any video game systems games anything go on to uh the website macari uh search bill tendo you'll find me it's gonna be the only thing there there you go well i'm like you man i got the twitch set up curious curiously speaking F-U-R-Y-U-S-L-Y speaking on Twitch, also on Instagram. Uh, check us out on the Nias Media Roku channel. There you'll catch uh, episodes and also speed runs with Bill Tendo. Also, again, like I said, we're on every major platform streaming. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker. Uh, also on your Amazon Alexa, uh, Amazon Music. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Another great episode. The Arcade Cabinet. Myself, Marquibus, Furious. Fiery Fox and Sharon signing off. Thanks for listening.